Hey everybody, welcome. This is Chris Miles here talking about how to become financially independent, uh, especially because we want a thousand to be financially independent within the next eight years by 2030. I also have on here Craig, who's our, our coach extraordinary that, that works a lot, a lot, really almost all of our clients right now. So Craig, how you doing? Good, Chris. How you doing, man? Good, man. Just glad to have you on here and, and uh, excited to be able to share some stories of real life experience, like not just hypothetical, you know, stuff of, Hey, you can get out of the rat race too, somehow, some way, but, uh, really get into the, the, the real nitty gritty, like talking about some real stories here. Absolutely. So now Craig, just as we have people jumping on here, just give a little bit of background on you and who you are. Sure. Yeah, I am. Uh, I was a, a long time wall street, um, employee kind of grinding away, um, really kind of uh, most of my twenties into my early thirties and, you know, really kind of thought that there had to be a better way, um, really to kind of reach financial freedom. That's kind of right around, you know, 2010, 2011, when I kind of first heard that buzzword and really, um, was attracted to it, wanted to understand what it meant. Um, and then really kind of started educating myself, you know, read a lot of Robert Kiyosaki to start with. And then the podcast revolution, uh, kind of started. Um, that's obviously, you know, how I found you and we connected, um, and then really have kind of just changed my whole mindset really from, you know, an asset gatherer to, um, somebody who really focuses on, you know, growth and cash flow alternative investments. Absolutely. Yeah, man. So glad to have you a part of the team. It's been, it's been great having you and, and been a huge asset to us. So really appreciate you being here. Yeah. Today. Thanks, man. It's been, uh, been great working with you and then, you know, all of our, uh, all of our wonderful clients we've been, we've you know, I've been on the team just about a year and a half now, and I've just seen some some great progress from people. So, want to uh, want to continue the progress with our current clients, and then also you know help uh, uh, help any new people who are looking uh, to join the ranks of the financial Lee uh, free. Awesome. Now, for the rest of you that are watching this as well, especially those watching live, uh, feel free to use our comments section here. Type in, say hi, tell us where you're from. Love to see who's tuning in right now because we can't see you. This is not like Zoom where we, we have this interactive audience. Uh, we basically can see you through chat only. So please go ahead and comment in there. Just say hi and where you're from. Love to talk to you as well. So uh, again, the whole purpose of this, I, I'm not going to mince words, is really how do you create that financial independence? Because we, we hear people all the time talk about you know getting on the rat race. I talked about Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And, uh, and it's a great book. But the one thing it's missing is the how to section, isn't it? Like, what do I actually do to do that? And really the big focus of what we're trying to do is, is really get you to the point where you work because you want to, not because you have to. How do you have enough passive income coming in? How do you have enough cash flow coming in so that you're work optional? You can stay in, you can leave, you know, you can you can keep doing what you're doing, but ultimately you have the freedom, you have options. And when you have options, that's where you have true freedom. It's not about you know, what you think you might have in 30, 40 years, which is what everybody else teaches in the financial world. It's about what can you do right now? And just like the podcast that came out this morning where we said, stop trying to plan your financial future. Instead, plan your financial present right now. And as a result, then we'll start to see the future take care of itself. Because the truth is, we don't know if we're going to be alive 30, 40 years, right? We hope we are, but we don't know. We don't know what life circumstances are going to change or come up. The only thing we can control is right now is today. And uh, just like the science says behind me is live your dream life today or live your life now, not tomorrow. Right. Again, if you take care of today, tomorrow will take care of itself. You know, David also welcome for joining in, you know, seeing you from coming in from Utah as well. So I'm glad to see there's two of us that are from Utah currently. So, all right. So I'll, let's just jump right down. I'm going to start sharing a few words about what we really mean, and how we actually accomplish this and, uh, and maybe even how you could apply this in your own situation. Um, the ultimate thing we want you to get from this is that you get some ideas and understand that the traditional financial model doesn't work. It's kind of broken. And, uh, and what's happened as a result is that, uh, again, you know, my story is 20 years ago, I was a financial advisor. I was teaching people how to try to become financially free by saving mutual funds, saving everything, spending nothing, saving it forever in the stock market. So hopefully someday we might have something. Uh, but the truth is, is that that's just not the case. You know, when you really start to look at evidence, and I noticed this over the years, I started to inherit clients. They weren't financially free either. And even worse, us financial advisors weren't financially free, especially if you ask them if they're financially free off the investments they're doing, not off the commissions they're earning. 
And that was a big, big problem for me. And I had to make that point that, that, that real, uh, defining moment for me is, do I stay in that industry and keep doing what I'm doing, knowing that it not, it's not really working. It's not creating freedom for people or do I leave? So I chose the latter. I left and, uh, and I'll tell you that moment of now, what do I do? Uh, that's where I said, well, I got to figure out how to create freedom for myself. And so later that year, 2006, I was able to become financially independent myself where I had more than enough cash will coming in to pay for my expenses. So then I became work optional. And that's where I said, I got to teach people how to do this. And, you know, I'll tell you, I've been through it all. I've been through the thick and the thin, the left and the right. Um, I went financially independent to over a million dollars in debt, had to figure out how to dig out of that hole, was able to do that and then become financially independent the second time in 2016. And, uh, and that's really the big focus of what we teach because it works. If, if, if I can figure it out, if I was a million dollars in debt, um, where there was a homeless guy on the street that was a million dollars richer than I was, and I could still become financially independent. I know any of you guys can as well, even though it might take some work and some grit, it definitely can happen for you if you do it the right way and, and reject everything that we've been taught the whole time. All right. So I'm trying to figure out how to, you know, use this right now. Currently, let's see. There we go. All right. All right. Technology can be my friend. <laughs> yes. You got it. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so I'm going to jump right to slide two once it loads here. Um, but uh, again, background on me, like I said, I was a recovering financial advisor. Uh, I live here in Utah. I actually have a family of 10. I have a blended family of eight kids. I have six. My wife has two, which just goes to show that she loves me a lot more, right? Uh, she definitely has to love me to go from two to eight kids than for me going six to eight. It was a much bigger adjustment for her. Um, the other thing we do too in our company, like we talk about, we actually help people consult. We create this anti-financial plan for people. We're not financial advisors. We're not investment advisors at all. But what we do is we actually help you strategize and create a game plan to figure out how to get out of that rat race. How can you take all the available resources you have and turn that into passive income, whether it's monthly, quarterly, yearly, whatever it might be, so that you can get out of the rat race yourself. So uh, so that's really what we're trying to do here. We also do things with like infinite banking. If you've ever heard of infinite banking and that kind of stuff, we also do that as well, where we help you figure out how to get your investment money to pay you twice. So you earn money in two places at the same time. Uh, a whole nother strategy that we're not going to get into in this one. Again, we want to stay more on the getting out of the rat race type of situation here. All right. So we are still waiting for this, this slide to load. And uh, I'm going to try something separate here. I will go with this. This is going to wig out. Okay, that's not working there. Well, fine. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on there. All right. Well, we are just going to go with this. So here's what I'm going to say. Um, we're going to completely go off, off the cuff and just talk with you. And just have a conversation. By the way, again, as I said, tune if you're just tuning in, say hi, say where you're from, that kind of thing. And if you have questions that come up along the way, put those questions in the chat and let's have a conversation. All right. Uh, so here's the basic premise. I love what Warren Buffett says is that if you do not make money when you sleep, you will, you will work until you die. That's really what we're here to do is help create that freedom. So you are work optional. Now, everybody will ask, well, how do you do it? What's the strategy? This truth is there's a lot of strategies, but we stay away from the traditional stock market. We stay away from mutual funds. We stay away from the typical stocks and bonds, which really all it is is just financial Mexican food, right? Every time you think about Mexican food, it's always the same stuff, rice, beans, meat, tomatoes, lettuce, you know, all the same kind of stuff. But if you think about it, burritos have the same ingredients as tacos, don't they? Fajitas have the base, same basic ingredients and tostadas and taquitos. What doesn't matter what you have? It's all the same basic stuff. Cheese, 
you know, it's, it's all the same. That's really what financial advice is. It's all Mexican food. They're just selling you mutual funds and insurance products. That's it. They're just financial salespeople in suits. As well-intentioned as they are, they're not getting the real results that you want. So here's what I'm going to say is that we go outside of that in more of the alternative space. Now, some people might think, oh, that sounds risky. Yeah, here's the truth. If you got your money in the stock market, you're already risky. In fact, you're riskier than Craig and I are here because you've, you're trying to gamble your money there. And in fact, one of our case studies that we're talking about today actually is doing that or has done that and, and now moving their money away from it. That's one of the biggest, riskiest things you could possibly be doing. So don't tell us that you're a conservative person because you invest in your 401ks or IRAs because the truth is you're not. You're a gambler. You're gambling and hoping that the stock market just happens to have the right timing for you and that you might be able to be financially independent. But remember, the stock market, the 30-year S&P true average, the actual yield has only been about 8.3% for the last 30 years, not 10 or 12 like many people claim. And inflation is much higher than they claim. It's not 2 or 3%. We know that's not the case. Not just this year, but even in past years, it's more like at least 5, 6, 7% a year, minimum. And so when you have all these headwinds going against you, you realize it's almost impossible to become financially independent. You know, you can't become financially free. And even if you happen to save a lot of money, here's the problem. Uh, and I'm going to start with this first case study. And Craig, I know this is one of the clients you work with. So we're going to sure. kind of combine this together. Uh, they came with a total of about $3 million, or a little over $3 million that they had in, they're able to invest in places like, uh, you know, Apple stock, Amazon, you know, all the tech stuff, which is, in my opinion, really, uh, really risky. That's, uh, it's, it's even riskier than getting in a mutual fund or an SP 500 fund. They were gambling on single companies and they still had their own mutual funds too, including some in IRAs and whatnot. And, uh, and when they came to us, I said, yeah, but even though we've got millions in these stocks, we don't have financial freedom. So what we're talking about doing is getting away from those things. We don't, we don't ever advise people to cash out of the stock market because we're not investment advisors. We can't legally do that because I dropped my securities license in 2005, but we say, well, what about these alternative options? How about in the areas of real estate? So there are a lot of different things you can do in the areas of real estate. So you can get rentals, right? Um, now, I'm not just talking about the rentals you get in your backyard. Um, I like personally more like turnkey rental real estate. So turnkey rentals are ones where you buy them, but you have somebody else manage the property for you. You're not the one dealing with the tenants, toilets, and trash every day. Uh, you're not the one collecting rent. You're not even the one finding the renters. They do that work for you. You're there basically to buy the property and then collect the rent checks. Um, the cool thing is, is even, even now with some crazy interest rates, um, you can usually still at cash flow at least eight, nine, 10 plus percent just on the cash flow alone, not including any appreciation, tax benefits or anything else. Um, so that's one of the ways you can do it. There's also lending. People can do things with lending where you actually be, you lend money to people. It could be real estate investors. It could be people in business, although business is a little bit riskier. I'd be careful of that but you can actually charge an interest rate, become the bank, and you get paid the payments. You get paid the interest instead. Uh, there's things to do with like funds or notes, you know, which also deal with maybe a contractual thing or where you're, again, more of the lender in that situation. We also have things called syndications. Syndications, syndicated type of deals are deals where usually you pool your money with other people. So this could be where you go in and buy an apartment building together. This could be where you're pulling money together to go buy a commercial building, even a business building. It could be dealing with self-storage units, which is becoming a much hotter thing lately, especially as we look at more of a recession type of future showing up. Uh, it could even be in things in the, in the oil industry, you know, where you might be doing something buying oil uh, fields, like buying the actual acreage of the land and then leasing it out to oil companies and getting it back. The cool thing, again, 100%, you're hands off, you're financing it, but you're not the one doing the deal. You have the operators manage everything. You're just the financer and you get paid returns. Very often, most of those deals, we look at 10 plus percent returns just as a baseline interest rate, not including uh, additional returns that they pay out as well. Uh, there are also- Let me, let me interject real quickly, Chris, yeah. too, because um, you went through a lot of really great topics. You know, mm -hmm. as- um, you know, people that we work with, you know, we work with people who are, you know, sophisticated investors and we work with people who are complete beginners. And so it's really our job um, to really provide a solid education around what all of those alternative um, investments mean, how they work, 
how they pay um, money, you know, whether it's monthly, quarterly, you know, some are just growth plays. So with our clients, you know, we really do a very um, technical deep dive into the education portion. Um, you know, not only in physical real estate, but also a lot of the um, other funds and syndications you mentioned. Absolutely. I appreciate you making that point. I'm breezing over this because I just want to get more to those real life case studies, mm -hmm. but you're absolutely right. I mean, we, we really do talk more about um, individual deals. Um, here's the cool thing. We don't raise any money ourselves. We don't you know, have a fund or anything like that. We more stay in your corner where we have this, you know, what we call as the VIP network, right? Our vetted in investment professionals that we have that they're operators, they're doing these things. They have a proven track record. In many cases, at least 20 or 30 years that they've consistently always paid their investors through multiple recessions. Um, one of the big things that we want is that there's somebody who actually is, has a, a massive amount of integrity and they take very low risks with what they do. Again, any investments, there's always risks. You can lose your money at any time potentially because you just never know what can happen. The world can fall apart. Lots of things can happen. But again, when we talk about doing investments, it's not just buying these zeros and ones on, on a, you know, a stock piece of paper, right. Or, or a piece of paper or on a computer screen where those values go up or down with the day and you have no ability to manipulate or even improve those returns or even stop it from losing money. The only thing you know, really, you have no real asset when you deal with stock market type stuff, but here you actually have claim to real assets, things that actually have intrinsic value. And that's why real estate often is one of the safer bets, even though it doesn't mean it's guaranteed by any way, shape or form. Um, definitely. I look at that as a lower risk kind of scenario versus one where you hope then pray that a money manager makes the right decisions. And, uh, and of course they can't always make the, the best decisions anyways, because uh, of limitations that they have when they do your investments. So those are the kind of things we're talking about there. Uh, even outside of real estate, there's even things like franchises, you know, there's things of that nature, uh, where you can actually go, you might be working five or 10 hours a week. You get it to a point where it's manageable. But you could make six figures a year with a franchise that's, you know, a little bit easier. So, so that's another thing we have. And we can kind of see that we're flipping through here as well. Kevin, welcome from Wisconsin. I know you're barely, you're the Wisconsin border, but uh, welcome. Appreciate you having you join us too. Um, other things you could do too are like partnerships, right? Um, some of our best deals that we have that we'll never put on our podcast uh, because they are very, you know, it's very limited space. There's very limited clients that can get to it. And Craig and I like to invest in them too. Um, this is why partnerships are a really big thing as well, where you partner your money and go into a deal together. And, uh, and this is not just like lending. This could be something where you guys are buying an asset and then could possibly flip it and turn it around. Uh, we have stuff with raw land. We do that with, there's things even like pre-construction with, with uh, commercial instruction, like apartment buildings you can do. Um, and sometimes that's where you get to the multiple double digit type of returns. Um, but uh, as a potential there, um, I even have money in one income investment that hundred thousand is kicking off over 4,400 a month so far. Um, it's actually growing as we speak month after month, it keeps increasing a little by little. So there's, there's lots of ways to do this. So let's talk about these, some of these real life situations. So, um, you know, Craig, I kind of do these as initials because we, we take uh, our client confidentiality very seriously. Mm -hmm. um, so I refer to these this couple as R&D, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not research and development. Uh, but uh, I know we'll, we'll, you gave me some of their statistics beforehand. I, I, one of the big things that surprised me was uh, in their situation, they, uh, they, uh, they had some loans. And I remember seeing that before, mm -hmm. but then be able to see what they could actually do. Uh, what was it? We consolidated some of their loans and it freed up about, was it 3,800, almost 4,000 a month? I think it was. Yeah. Just with, um, you know, our, our first meeting, um, you know, we really focused a lot on, they were, um, uh, two high income earners, mm -hmm. um, and they, they had some nice assets, but really kind of lacked, um, some organizational structure around where all their money was going. I'm sure it's an issue. Um, a lot of people can probably relate to, you know, you, you work yeah. really hard throughout the month, you know, you pay your bills and then, you know, at the end of the month you say, you know, where did all this money go? Um, mm -hmm. so a big part of, you know, my philosophy is really automating your cash flow, uh, making sure dollars are going, um, to where they're supposed to go. Um, so once we went through that exercise, we really kind of focused in on, um, you know, the different types of loans they had. Um, and we went through a pretty detailed debt consolidation exercise, um, where we are able to pay off 
um, a lot of various you know types of loans and cards, um, and really kind of consol consolidate those payments uh, into one low interest payment, uh, which saved significant uh, significant money. Yeah, that one was. If anything, I mean, even though they were looking just for passive income, it's nice when we do that money leak analysis in that first mm -hmm. meeting just to say, wait a minute, hold on. One of the easiest ways to get out of the rat race is not just increasing the passive income, but also if we could reduce the expenses, you know, that that monthly burn rate, we can reduce that number without them having to live on rice and beans. Hey, we just hit that financial independence number faster, don't we? Absolutely. And then really the kind of the key there too is, you know, you take your savings, um, you know, that you recognize mm -hmm. every month and then you funnel that into various investments um, as opposed to, um, you know, other other toys or things that, you know, may be fun at first, but, but aren't going to help you reach your financial freedom goals. Um, and so really just kind of, you know, they're already saving um, on top of that, but then, you know, just by consolidating their debt, getting more money freed up, uh, they're really supercharging their way um, to their goals. That's absolutely correct. Well, and you mentioned another money leak they had, which uh, we're still waiting to hear the results on it, but tax savings was another one too, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Any um, people who are, I mean, there's tax savings across the board, um, but especially for, for new business owners and people involved um, in the real estate world, whether you're um, you know, a real estate professional or whether you own a lot of investment properties, um, being uh, matched up with the right CPA is oftentimes um, one of the best decisions you can make for your financial future. I tell clients, you know, you don't need a financial advisor. You need a really good CPA. Um, they're the ones who are really going to save you money come tax time, especially um, for high income earners, people that own businesses. So many um, different ways to reduce your tax liability. And oftentimes, you know, people have gone from paying thousands in taxes to, you um, getting, you know, thousands back in refunds, um, just yeah. all with, you know, utilizing the right tax strategy. And we're all about connecting people with tax planners. Um, not really people who, you know, do an annual filing and then you don't hear, hear from them again, you know, until April of the following year. So we, I, you know, I'm a big believer in quarterly planning and meeting with your CPA running major purchases or major, um, investment decisions by your CPA. Um, mm. and that will really kind of, um, propel you going forward. That's right. Yeah. On here, I, I, can you see the screen now? I can. Okay, good. At least, at least we got something to work there. Um, yeah. So just putting up their situation, I put five to 10,000 a year of tax savings because it's not too uncommon to see at least that much is what I found in my experience. It could be more um, and we would be pleasantly surprised, but I kind of put it more in the kind of the low to average range of what we mm -hmm. might see, especially if there's business type of us. Yeah. I think in their case, it'll, it'll be considerably more. Um, yeah. but I think, um, I think on average, that's a very fair, a fair number, especially if you own a business. Yeah. Anytime, even when up front, when we try to estimate your numbers, when we try to assess it and figure out, you know, what's your passive income going to be, we always try to stay conservative on the very low end, just to make sure we're not you mm -hmm. know, over promising anything. Um, we always like you to be pleasantly surprised by getting better results than you actually get. So, but yeah, you do the math there. I mean, already with the 3,800 a month, that's already about 46,000 a year. Add even if it's 10,000, you're probably right with their income level, it's probably going to be in the tens of thousands. Mm -hmm. Even if you make it 10,000, that's at 56,000 a year. Um, I was remembering, I forgot they had the rental that mm -hmm. um, they're negative cash flow on like 500 bucks a month too, aren't they? Yeah, I'm going to look to do a 1031 um, on the rental to, you know, it's whenever you're looking at real estate, um, it's really all about the numbers um, mm -hmm. and you want to make sure you're buying in the right area. Um, and, you know, even if you have a property that's appreciating, if it's negative cash flow month over month, that's just going to be a, a big stress uh, in your life. So it's really kind of all about finding the right property uh, and, the, and the right place to invest. Yeah. I put in conservatively 2000 a month improvement mm -hmm. from the negative 500 to a positive 1500, but I would imagine it might even be a little bit more than that. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. So right there, now we've already got this to from 56 now to about 80,000 a year. Um, <laughs> and then of course we got moving out of stocks and alternatives. This, you know, is where we mentioned about buying individual stocks and different IRAs and things like that. Uh, just so you know, these people aren't in their sixties. Uh, these people are in their forties and fifties, you know, one's in their forties, the others in their fifties. They're not even ready to touch some of that IRA and 401k money. So the cool thing is, uh, even if they only earned 10% return on the $5 million they have in these different funds and different stocks they have, if they decide to move these more into cash flowing investments, 
that's a half million a year. <laughs> and yeah, it sounds it's, it's, crazy. It's pretty wild. Mm -hmm. It sounds wild, but it's true. You know, it's uh, it's it's not hard. And, and and even even if you look at some of the money they have in some of these other situations, there's a lot of people getting more than ten percent on some of the depending on where they deploy their money. And so that's why even in their case, it's you know actually it would have been five hundred eighty thousand plus. You know, I put seventy five just to go on the low end from mm -hmm. the math there. But that's that's just crazy uh, to imagine. Yeah, you know, way, are, they pretty, are they pretty excited? <laughs> they're very excited and they have, you know, without getting to anything personal, they have a very strong why um, behind, mm -hmm. you know, their their decision to um, to reach financial freedom. And for anyone that's listening, I would um, I would recommend, you know, if you have money in the stock market, if you're involved with mutual funds, really try to think through what that looks like um, in the future. So if you mm -hmm. fast forward yourself, you um, you know, 10, 20, 30 years, whenever, you know, you plan to quote unquote retire, think about having, you know, a million dollar, um, you know, say mutual fund or stock portfolio, which is kind of, you know, the magic number that a lot of people think through. And then if you follow the 4% rule, right? So they mm -hmm. say, and that's, I think, even aggressive, um, I would say it's probably more now closer to the two to 3% rule, right. um, but we'll just go with 4% because um, that's really kind of the buzzword. If you withdraw 4% of that portfolio every year, you are basically selling $40,000 worth of income um, that you can live on. And that's pre-tax. So you're going to owe, assuming it's not in a Roth, uh, Roth product, you're going to owe money um, on that $40,000. You know, you've got to think right. of inflation as well, which is going to eat away at that money considerably. And then if, you know, if something happens, you know, if there's another 2008 um, financial crisis um, and your portfolio goes from, you know, a million to 500,000, um, then you're withdrawing money on a much smaller uh, principal balance. And so I think right. those, you know, a lot of people just blindly um, put money into a 401k, um, you know, blindly give money to a financial advisor. And you really need to think through, you know, what your future looks like um, and how you're going um, to pay your bills. You know, Social Security is, is definitely not a certainty. Um, you know, we've been hearing uh, about the shortages um, and that government's, you know. Uh, trust fund for a while. So we'll see what happens there. Um, but really kind of starting with cash flowing investments really kind of gives you um, a lot of confidence um, and a lot of power uh, to have control over your financial life. And these two clients specifically, um, you know, they are, you know, they have a strong why and they want to move quickly, but they also are doing a lot of due diligence. They are speaking with a lot of different investment operators and, you know, per my suggestion, they are taking it slow, right? So I That's think it's good. always good to say, you know, let's, the proof is in the pudding, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, could they buy, um, you know, a million dollar house and generate, you know, thousands of dollars in cash flow every month? Uh, they could. Um, but, you know, as they're newer to real estate, you know, let's start with something small, understand the process, make sure that, you um, you like being a real estate investor, make sure you understand how the process works. Same thing with different funds or syndicators, you know, get to know the, the managers um, of those companies. Um, you know, we've had a lot of clients in one specific fund out in Oklahoma um, that I know you're familiar with, Chris, um, mm -hmm. who um, the fund's doing really, really well. Um, and a lot of clients um, have hundreds of thousands to invest with them. Um, but some of them are starting with, you know, 50K minimum just to see how it goes. Um, and then, you know, I, I think they'll probably scale from there. Um, but my point being, you can take it slow. You can see how things work. You know, different investments are right for different people. Um, and so really kind of the money ripples mindset um, is just starting the cash flow snowball, um, you know, watching it grow. And then as you gain experience, as you gain education, as you gain confidence, um, you can really focus um, on hitting your goals. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I completely agree. That, that's, I think that's the big difference really of what we're seeing here, because like you said, the 4% rule everybody talks about, but even the wall street journal last October said 3% was probably mm -hmm. more like the number that they would suggest. And I even think, like you said, that might even be a little high, but think about it. Like these guys with $5 million, 3%, they could live on 150,000 a year, but they still have to pay the tax on that. There's no tax advantages mm -hmm. at all, especially if the monies they have tied up in their IRAs and 401ks. 
where I'll tell you, I'll tell you of, what though, 150 is not going to cut it uh, for their lifestyle either. You know, they're, they're too high term. income earners, not long term, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, especially with inflation, you know, they're they're not showy people by any sense of the word, but they've got you know a few kids. They want to help them through college, um, right. so I think they're seeing kind of the writing on the wall now and, and realizing that there, you know, is a better way to get there. Yeah, they want a free lifestyle, of course. Mm -hmm. you know, they want to have you know a life, you know, versus saying, hey, we're on a fixed budget, right? Um, even as multi millionaires. So, uh, yeah, so this is a great case study. Now, this one's a little bit on the higher end. Um, so we want to put in some others because you might say, well, yeah, but I don't have $5 million. Thanks, mm -hmm. guys. Okay, well, let's talk about another one. So, uh, Craig, you're also working with this woman as well. Mm -hmm. um, I, was, I was reverse engineering all the math and everything from the investments she's in, but I wanted to break it down. And it's great. It's very helpful when our clients say, here's exactly what we're in. Here's what we're making per quarter or per month. And so... We broke it down. She had about 650,000 that she was investing so far. Um, oil investments she's got, you know, that she's making about 32,000 a year on. She's got different debt funds. And when we say debt, we mean like, you know, they could be uh, lending money. Mm -hmm. They could be or lending money to a group that lends to multiple investors and things like that. Yeah. With the debt fund, think, think fixed monthly payments. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they're more like fixed monthly payments. Um, even a real estate fund, you know, with one of our, you know, with one of our, you know, great uh, vetted professionals that we have mm -hmm. as well. Um, in total, seventy six thousand a year. And from your comment, uh, Craig, you also mentioned that that wasn't including some of the IRA money from her husband's account, correct? Right. Yeah, she's a really fun client to work with. Very detailed. Um, very smart. Um, so we have a lot of. Um, in depth discussions about, you know, different investment opportunities. And she's got a lot of diversification. Um, and so we really helped her kind of supercharge um, her way to financial freedom just by making the right introductions, having the right discussions, you know, doing doing the right due diligence. I and mean, here's a key thing to remember. Well, one, 650,000, remember we talked about that 3% rule. That's only 19,500 a year you'd be living on the traditional mutual fund strategy. Mm -hmm. Where here, it's not 19,500, it's about four times that. 76,000. And what's great is if you're still working and you could take that cash hole, reinvest it, and that can increase each and every year. This is not just a one time mm -hmm. thing. And well, that was fun. This is, Hey, let's start here, but let's keep it growing and building and, and getting to towards whatever that goal is, whether you're want 10,000 a month or 120,000 a year or 20,000 a month, or we've even had people that want 500,000 years a goal. Yeah. And I, you, you have the three kind of main asset classes of how those funds are allocated. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's spread across, uh, just around eight or nine investments, um, that make yeah. up that number. Um, so definitely some great diversification. Um, you know, she got to know the investment operators very well, kind of did the same thing I discussed previously, started small, um, really got to know people really liked, um, you know, initial results and then, you know, scale from there. Exactly. Yeah. And she was somebody too, you know, I, I, you know, both of us love physical real estate, but she was somebody who said, I don't want to do any physical real estate. <laughs> I, I've been there, done that. She actually owns some short-term rentals. Um, that takes up mm. a, lot, a lot of her time. Um, and so, you know, didn't want to do anything, anything, you know, uh, with the turnkey route. Um, so tons of other options, uh, that she was able to, uh, able to go into. And that's a good point too, is that it's not just a one size fits all plan. Mm -hmm. You know, when we work with you, we're, help and help strategize to figure out, well, what is the best? So if you don't want to deal with rentals, great. What are some of the other alternatives? If you're mm -hmm. focused more on cash flow, what are some alternatives there versus if you want longer term growth, there's different alternatives there and really trying to help narrow down the options and point you in the direction of saying, here's some of the better options. We'll never tell you, you should invest here or you should invest there that we won't cross that, that legal line, but we can, we can say mm -hmm. based on your objectives or what you want to do and how you want your life to look like, here are some, here are some types of investments you can do. And here are some people that we've vetted that, although not guaranteed, these are people that have a great track record that you could talk to, build a relationship with. And if you decide you can invest with them. Yeah, there's definitely going to be a, an inherent level of risk in every investment. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, if you if you invest your money with anyone who says it's guaranteed, I would run the the other way because um, that's just not how investing works, whether it's the stock market, whether it's more um, all the on the alternative side. Um, but we definitely provide our clients with a lot of education um, around risk and return. You know, it's, mm -hmm. you know, I'd say similar to the stock market, some, you know, some deals, you know, may carry, um, you know, a few extra points of return. Um, there may be some 
um, additional risk there um, to some of those points. Um, but some people who are more conservative, uh, we can uh, can invest those or help you invest those funds, educate you um, on some more conservative investments as well. So tons of uh, tons of different opportunities. Definitely. All right. So I want to share a third case here. Uh, this is a woman I just spoke with last week. Uh, she's a chiropractor and uh, we get a lot of those guys that come to us, chiropractors and dentists. So I want to bring up somebody from that health profession. Um, her situation, it wasn't like she had a lot of money, right? This is a, kind of a typical middle-class situation where she had, you know, a few hundred thousand dollars that she could invest with between IRAs and savings and things like that. Well, again, conservative, just 10% return. She hasn't been able to invest this money yet. 27,000 a year. Uh, we could do better. And I told her that, but we never want to make any promises, but even she just made 10% average on this, which is our low baseline. That's 27,000 a year. Another opportunity we, we saw that that didn't always come up. We have a passive income calculator on moneyripples.com. Definitely recommend if you guys haven't used that calculator yet, go use it. Um, go see it, especially if you've got at least a few hundred thousand in savings in retirement accounts and or home equity. Definitely try to use that calculator. See how much cash flow you could possibly be making. Um, but you know, we she this number didn't come up there, but we realized, hey, your payment's a little bit high for your mortgage balance. What if we refinanced that, got the payment lower, freed up some money there, and we got a home equity line of credit on the back end that then we can use to invest. Uh, that would increase her cash flow by a net, even after the mortgage payment, about 17000 a year right there. Um, so almost 1500 bucks a month. And then we also, with some of the extra cash, pay off pay us a lease that's in her business, and um, that would free up another 4000 bucks a month. So we're like, hey, we'll even take some of that savings, not invested, but just pay off a lease. Because sometimes... You know, some debts we do want to pay off, although uh, many cases we might say, let's not pay it off or even refinance it to a lower payment. So in total, 48,000 a year. Oh, wait, yeah, I did that right. I want to make sure I did the math right. 48,000 a year or an average about 4,000 bucks a month. Again, with just, you know, having a few hundred thousand dollars, you know, that's, it. there's so yeah. many possibilities. And what's really powerful there too, Chris, is if you, um, if you're able to take that 4,000 and reinvest it, um, mm -hmm. it can, it can grow quickly, right? It's similar to yeah. how cash flow compounds is similar to how, um, Income. you know, the stock market compounds as well. Right. So it can take a while, um, especially if you don't have a huge asset base to get to mm -hmm. your first thousand in passive income, you know, get to 2000. Once you can start to build up your cash flow, um, to three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 a month, and you are able to reinvest that, um, you know, you can, you can grow that monthly income very, very quickly. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, another, another situation I thought of was this was one I'm more personally like have a, a emotional attachment to because I had worked with this client on and off for more than a decade. <laughs> so we did some things to help free up some cash flow initially. And, and he's a, you know, he, uh, he's a, a farmer, you know, and, and he's and of course with any, anybody I see in that industry, oftentimes it's feast or famine, right? They got their season of harvest and mm -hmm. then they got the rest of the year to try to figure out how to make it through. So of course, for them, they want stability. They want cash flow. They want that passive income so that they don't have to have the stress of that feast or famine mode that not only do they go through, but like many entrepreneurs who might have cycles in their business, they might have a feast and famine mode too. Well, fortunately, um, it took a while. It took several years. We were able to find someone who was able to give them a, a cash out refinance on their land. That cash out refinance gave them about $1.2 million they could invest. And uh, and what's cool is even after paying their mortgage payment, they're still going to net this year. And, and again, this is based just based on a plan. We were looking at um, a little bit within you know, oil, you know, doing something in that, in that mm -hmm. industry, um, doing quite a bit in the real estate side and uh, even, you know, some buying some rentals as well as doing some things with apartment buildings. And then we were looking at even raw land, you know, buying raw land and, and making money and cash flow off of those kind of terms. Uh, in total, they were going to make at least 9,500 and still have another 200,000 to decide what to do with. So just the million dollars, they were going to net $9,500 a month. Their goal, their passive income goal was $10,000 a month. So now they got this two, you know, $200,000. All they have to do is bridge the other $5,000 a year um, or sorry. $6,000 a year, 500 a month that they'd have to bridge. And they're already there within a year. So even though it did take some time and a lot of patience and frustration, what's really 
rewarding to me is that they were finally able to do that. And now it just takes all the pressure off him and his family. He has a huge passion. He wants to teach, you know, he doesn't want to just, you know, work the land. He actually wants to really teach and develop youth and develop, you know, people and, and help them to, uh, to improve their lives. And so very excited for that because this gives him the ability to create that platform more quickly versus being always caught up in his business where he can't escape it. Yeah, that's great. So, uh, anyways, by the way, if I'm stopping sharing this cause I want to be able to tune in and, and just see how you guys are doing. What, you know, what's going on with you guys right now? Any questions that are popping up? Oh, it looks like, oh, we got several questions that popped up now since, uh, we saw it. Um, I'm actually switching to cameras right now. And, uh, Anyways, uh, so let's let's go into those questions right now. Well, all right, well, whatever. So, um, okay, this is all for Money Ripples. Okay, so Keaton had a question here. Uh, Keaton said, what would you say the buy-in point is? Is there a certain discretionary income amount you would recommend before starting programs like this? Um, what would you say the buy-in is? I'm, I'm assuming uh, going in from what he's talking about here, what we want to do is we want to make sure you make at least 20,000 a year. Um, so if you hire us for one-on-one, -on -one, cause we get asked that question, we're just going to be upfront. Just tell you it's $10,000 to hire us for one-on-one. -on -one. We will only take you on a, as a client. If we know for a fact, uh, you know, based on conservative returns, we can increase your cash flow by $20,000 over the next 12 months. Um, if not, uh, we do have other programs. We have like the wealth accelerator Academy that also helps teach a lot of this and prepares you. Um, just like some of these clients where they need a lot of education and pr preparation before they just want to jump in, that's a perfect way to do it. And you can go to our website, moneyripples.com. You can see information on that Wealth Accelerator Academy. Um, great thing to use. Again, if you ever want to verify and just kind of see whether it's it's a good thing uh, about which, which, which path to take, whether you should work with us one-on-one -on -one or just go through that, that online interactive program where we do more group coaching and uh, we even do some live stuff as well. Uh, just take that passive income calculator on moneyripples.com and find out what your number is. If that number is 20, about uh, really close to 20,000 or higher, then I would definitely say, let's talk, you know, let's, let's, let's reach out to us. Let's see if we can do an analysis, see what we see from our own eyes. So we can do our own assessment, not just the calculator and verify it. In many cases, uh, when we've seen those numbers come out, uh, unless you put in numbers wrong, in most cases, usually the number ends up being better than what the calculator says. Even if it's just a few thousand dollars a year better, it turns out to be better. Um, sometimes it's worse because sometimes people put in the wrong numbers or they put in you know, misstated numbers. But for the most part, it's usually a lot better than that. And that's what I recommend for you guys is if you're looking to do that and knowing where to turn, you know, that's what we're here to do. We're strategists and connectors, right? We're here to help you strategize the plan that financial advisors won't do and, and financial advisors can't do uh, because they're just stuck offering you the same old vanilla Mexican food called mutual funds, right? Um, that's really all they can offer. And, and they don't understand this world. There's so much more in this world that you can do that you can get much better returns, much more consistent cash flow now. Again, creating that financial present versus worrying about your financial future. Have a financial present where you get real results now so that you can have that life that you live today. So, uh, that's the big thing we're here to do. And, and, you know, we, when we say we want you financially free 10 years or less, that's, that's, that's not just some pipe dream. That's, that's literally what we're having people do right now. Uh, we've even had people on our podcast recently. One as a follow-up emailed us and said, Hey, you know, I was on your podcast early on when we started, but guess what? I'm now at 12,000 a month passive income. Like he hit his goal within one year. Again, another guy that, uh, Craig also worked with. Um, we had, yeah, you know, I would also say too, Chris, um, yeah, you know, once, once our clients, um, you know, graduate from our one-on-one -on -one program, we also, um, you know, they go into our, our money ripples mastermind where you're around a lot of other like-minded, um, individuals. Um, you know, we meet, um, at a minimum monthly, um, and it's really just a great place where you can talk to other like-minded people, discuss, mm -hmm. Um, you know, other various investments, you know, everyone's got different cash flow goals. People talk about what they're struggling with, what's going, you know, going well in their world and in their life. And it's just a great community uh, of like-minded people. And I think, um, you know, bringing people together with the same energy, the same 
um, you know, thoughts about money and investing really just kind of um, helps people reach their goals that much quicker. A hundred percent agree. It's, you know, this, this goes beyond just the numbers. Um, although I, I geek out over that. I know Craig does too. The, the truth is that this is actually something that, that changes your life for the better. I mean, I, just imagine your life right now, even if you had another $3,000 a month, $4,000, $5,000 a month coming in that now your assets are actually working harder for you than you are for them. You know, you don't have to keep working so hard for money. It can be the other way around and it opens up options. You know, I think about my own life, you know, even though I'm still working in this business and, and, uh, we're trying to expand this to where we have a thousand of you financially independent. And hopefully that would be you, you know, hopefully that you're one of those people that actually are living it just like tens of millions of other people are doing as well in this country, doing these kinds of investments, but we don't hear about that on the media because you know, us as investors, we don't pay billions of dollars in marketing to tell you to invest with us. Um, that's not what we do, uh, because this stuff is done privately. Uh, this is the kind of thing that, you know, financial institutions will pay billions of dollars for and they market it and they get the Susie, Susie Ormans and Dave Ramsey to tell you, you should buy this or you should go do this. Hey, here's a great company you should do that with. And it's always like the same old financial institutions you hear about forever. But the truth is that those people still aren't financially free, which is why they keep showing up to talk to us because they know there's got to be something better. And um, from personal experience, when you can actually change your financial present now, actually create that, you know, financial future from today, which you can predict, you can't predict the future. And again, we don't know if we're going to be alive in the future, but right now you can influence your, your life today. What happens that opens up doors for you to have that freedom. You know, that's where I'm so grateful. I can, you know, teach my kids something different. This, this should go beyond just your own life. This should be a legacy that you create that goes beyond you that you teach your children a new way of living, a new way of thinking about money, not the same old scarcity saver way that of living on rice and beans forever, actually living a life of freedom and prosperity now because you understand this stuff better than the majority of Americans today. People are trapped because they just don't know any better. This is why we're here. This is why we're so passionate about it. This is why we bang the heck out of our drum saying, Look what we can do. We can do it so much better and do it in a way that just improves your lifestyle to where it will never be the same again. So that's our challenge to you. Again, go to moneyripples.com. If there's no more questions, just go to moneyripples.com. Try that passive income calculator out. Um, if it's less than $20,000, significantly less, then the Wealth Accelerator Academy program is probably the right one for you. If it's more than $20,000, then uh, reach out to us, contact us on our moneyripples.com page and we'll help you out. So everybody appreciate your time. Thanks for tuning in again, the best to you and the best of your prosperity. And we'll love to be able to serve you any way we can. Thanks.